Hello, this is the 14th video on my multivaluable calculus course. In this video, we're going to talk about directional derivatives. So what is directional derivatives? So we talked about partial derivatives. Partial derivatives are a special form of directional derivatives. So let's see what they are and then how do we evaluate that. So let's imagine you have a function of two variables, f of x, y, and we want to find the rate of change of this function at some point x naught comma y naught. So if you look at this point, this would be f of x naught comma y naught on the z-axis. So we want to find out what's the rate of change at that point. But of course the rate of change depends on which direction you travel on the surface, on the surface z equals f of x y. Now we talked about directional derivatives in two directions, direction of the x-axis and direction of the y-axis. Now what if we uh, travel in a different direction? So what, what does it mean that we travel in a different direction? It means we are traveling in a direction of a unit vector. So let's just start with the unit vector u. So u is a unit vector. And we want to find out what is the rate of change if we travel along this uh, unit vector. So if you look at that unit vector, along that unit vector, we, let's say we go t units in that t unit in that direction. So if you go t unit in that direction, we go from x naught y naught to uh, t times u plus x naught y naught. So what's the point that we end up with? This point that we end up with is going to be x plus t a and y naught plus t b. So this is the point. Now we're going to write, write down the rate of change uh, from x0, y0 to this new point, x0 plus ta, y0 plus tb. So what's the rate of change? So the average rate of change is going to be change in y, uh, in, in this case, z coordinates, so rise, so it would be this one, which would be f of x0 plus ta, y0 plus tb minus f of x naught y naught. So this is the change in z component or the change in the function divided by the change here on the, the red line. So what's the change over there? That's t. So this is the average rate of change from x naught y naught to x naught plus t a comma y naught plus t b. Now how do we get the rate of change, instantaneous rate of change? We let t to go to zero. So I have summarized what I just told you here. So the directional derivative of f at point x0, y0 in the direction of u is going to be the limit of f of x0 plus ta, comma y0 plus tb minus f of x0, y0 divided by t, and we let t go to, to go to 0. We have to be careful that this vector u must be a unit vector. So since we are going in a certain direction, we, we would have to make sure that it is a unit vector. Okay, so now if you have a function of three variables, then you can do basically the same thing with, a, with an additional component of z0 and z0 plus tc. If your direction is the x-axis or the y-axis or the z-axis, in other words, if the vector u is i, j, or k, we will get uh, partial derivatives with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to z. Now the question is how do we evaluate this directional derivative? With one application of the chain rule, which I'm not going to go over that here, we can get that the directional derivatives are going to be a times f sub x plus b times f sub y, if your our vector is a, b. And if you have a function of three variables, it would be the same thing. You just have to add one more term, c times f sub z. So let's do an example on this one. Find the directional derivative of this function at point y, uh, 1 pi and in the direction 3 uh, i plus 4 j. Okay, so 1 pi is our point. So that's our x naught y naught. So x naught comma y naught is 1 comma pi. Well, our function is given and our direction is the unit vector in that direction. So 3i plus 4j divided by magnitude of that which is root 9 plus 16. So this would be 3 fifth i 
plus 4 fifth j. So that's our direction. So in order to find the directional vector in that direction, we'll have to first find the partial derivatives of that. So partial derivatives are cosine of y and minus x sine of y. Next, we're going to plug in 1 comma pi in here. So f sub x at 1 comma pi, that would be cosine of pi, which is negative 1. f sub y at 1 comma pi would be negative 1 sine of pi, and sine of pi is 0. What is the directional derivative of f at this point? It would be partial, which is negative 1, times a, which is 3 fifth, plus partial times b, which is 4 fifth. So the answer is negative 3 fifth. So the rate of change of this function in that particular direction is exactly negative 3 fifth. Let's do one more example. Evaluate the directional derivative of this in the direction of i plus j plus k at that point. Well, our direction is not a unit vector, so we'll have to turn it into a unit vector. So i plus j plus k divided by square root of 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 1 over root 3i plus 1 over root 3j plus 1 over root 3k. So that's our direction. And our point x0, y0, z0 is... 1, negative 1, 0. Next, we're going to have to find the partials of this function. So partials of this function with respect to x, y, and z. Partial with respect to x, because we have product here, we'll have to use product rule. So derivative of the first one is y times the second one plus the first one times the derivative of the second one, which would be e to the x, z times z. So that's the chain rule. Next, we're going to have to find f sub y. f sub y would be partial with respect to y, so it would be x e to the x z. And finally, f sub z is x y e to the x z times x. So that's the partial with respect to z. Next, we're going to have to plug in the value that they gave us, 1, negative 1, 0. So f sub x at 1, negative 1, 0 is going to be, if you plug in 1, negative 1, 0, we get negative 1 for y, and then e to the power of x times z, which is 0, plus 1 times negative 1 times e to the 0 times 0, so that's negative 1. Then we're going to plug in the same point, 1, negative 1, 0, into here. We will get 1 e to the power of 0, which is 1, and f sub z at 1, negative 1, 0 is 1, negative 1, e to the 0 times 1, which is negative 1. So these are the partials. Now the directional derivative of f at this point, 1, negative 1, 0, is going to be, we'll take each partial multiplied by the corresponding component. So each partial, that's negative 1, multiplied by 1 over root 3, plus 1, 1 over root 3 minus 1 and then 1 over root 3. Well, these two cancel, so we get minus 1 over root 3. So directional derivative, the rate of change in that direction is negative 1 over root 3. So let's kind of recap what we have done and then see what are the sum consequences of this formula that we just used. So what we did was we showed that we, we used the fact that directional derivatives are a times f sub x plus b times f sub y. Now this looks a lot like a, uh, an inner product, a dot product. And in fact, we can write it down as the dot product of u because the components are a and b and this vector f sub x times uh, f sub x i, f sub y j. So that's an inner product of these two. Now notice that this vector the f sub x i plus f sub j, x sub y j doesn't depend on u. It only depends on the function. So this is quite important. This uh, is uh, called the gradient of a function. So gradient of the function is f sub x, f sub y. If it is a function of three variables, it would be f sub x time f sub x, f sub y, f sub z. So if you look at the dot product of u and the gradient, we get the directional derivative. Now, directional derivative can also be written as gradient of u, uh, 
um, I guess length of u, length of gradient of u, and then times cosine of theta as seen down here. Now, because u is a unit vector, so this is u and this is the gradient vector. Because u is a unit vector, we can replace this one by 1 and we would get gradient of u uh, times cosine of theta. So directional derivative is gradient times cosine of theta. Now what is the largest possible rate of change? The largest possible rate of change is when cosine of theta is 1. This cosine of theta is between negative 1 and 1. When cosine of theta is 1, theta is 0, and when cosine of theta is negative 1, theta is pi. So the largest rate of change is when theta is 0, which means we are in the direction of gradient. And the exact value is gradient of f, magnitude of gradient of f. And when theta is uh, pi, the directional derivative is going to be the smallest possible. So let's do an example on this. Given this function, f of xy equals x squared plus 2xy minus y squared, find the direction in which f of xy increases most rapidly at point 1, comma 2. And then find this maximum directional derivative. Okay. When does this directional derivative, um, um, when does this directional derivative become the, become the largest possible? When it would be exactly at the in the direction of the gradient. So let's first evaluate the gradient. The so gradient would be 2x plus 2y, comma. If we take the derivative with respect to x, we get 2x plus 2y. Take the derivative with respect to y, we get 2x minus 2y. Then we'll have to plug in the values. 1 comma 2 so that would give us 2 plus 4 comma 2 minus 4 so that would be 6 comma negative 2. So in this direction the rate of change is this is the largest possible. So the direction is 6 comma negative 2 divided by square root of 36 plus 4 which is 6 comma negative 2 divided by root 40. This can be, that can be slightly simplified, but that is an acceptable answer. Find the maximum directional derivative. Maximum directional derivative is exactly um, gradient of, uh, magnitude of gradient of f, which is exactly root 40, or 2 root 10. So maximum rate of change is 2 root 10, and the direction is in the direction of 6 comma negative 2, but usually when I talk about um, directions, I divide it by its magnitude. Okay, now let's, uh, uh, let's talk about one application of the uh, gradient vector. Assume that you have a level surface given by, or this would have to be actually a level curve, level curve, uh, f of x, y, and it is given by r of t equals x of t comma y of t, where k is a constant. Then I want to find the normal vector to that level curve. If you differentiate both sides by the chain rule, the derivative of the left side is partial with respect to x, derivative of x with respect to t, plus partial of f with respect to y times derivative of y with respect to t. But of course, that's a constant, so the derivative of that would be 0. When we think about x and y as a function of t, this function is exactly f of xy is exactly k, which means the derivative is 0. Now, writing this down as a dot product, we will see that um, gradient, which is basically this one, dotted with derivative, which is the tangent line, is equal to 0. So what does this mean? Let me give you an example. Let's say you have this surface and then the level curve is this curve here. So well, if you look at this one, the tangent is going to be a place that is like following the direction of the curve. So you expect the rate of change in the direction of the tangent to be basically zero. Now, if you want to go along a path that the rate of change is the largest possible, you would go exactly perpendicular direction to that. 
And if you go perpendicular direction to that, that's exactly the gradient because we saw how rate of change is maximized in the direction of the gradient. So that's kind of an intuition for why this uh, observation is in fact true. So what does it mean? It means gradient is normal to a curve. So gradient is perpendicular to the tangent vector r prime of t, which means gradient of uh, f is a normal vector to the level curve f of x, y equals k. A similar argument can be made for level surfaces. So suppose you have a surface that is given by f of x, y, z equals k, where k is a constant. And x0, y0, z0 is a point on the surface. Assume you have a curve on the surface given by r of t equals x, t, y, t, z, t. Then, if you apply the chain rule, you realize that the, cur uh, the uh, gradient, which is this, is perpendicular to r prime, which is this, which means gradient is going to be a normal to the curve. So if your surface is given by this, and then you are looking at a point x0, y0, z0, this would be gradient of f at x0, y0, z0, would be normal to the surface. Okay, so if that's the normal to the surface, then tangent to the surface, if you are trying to find the tangent plane, you can easily find that by using the point x0, y0, z0 and the normal vector. So let's do an example on this and then we will do more examples in the next video. A curve on the xy plane is given by this. Find a vector perpendicular to this curve at 1, 1 and 1, negative 1. So this is a question in two dimension. Well, what is our function? The function is x cubed minus 2xy plus y to the fourth. And the point that they gave us is 1, negative 1. Notice that 1, negative 1 does satisfy the equality. So 1, negative 1 gives you 1 minus 2 times 1 times negative 1 plus negative 1 to the power of 4, which of course it is 4. It wouldn't make sense to say find the perpendicular line, a perpendicular vector to the, to the curve when the point is not on the curve. Okay, so we have this. Now we'll find the gradient. We know that the gradient is the normal vector. So gradient would be partial with respect to x, which would be 3x squared minus 2y, partial with respect to y, which is minus 2x plus 4y cubed. So that's the normal perpendicular to curve, but we'll have to plug in the values that they gave us, 1, 81. So gradient at 1, 81 would be 3 plus 2, negative 2 minus 4, and that would be 5, negative 6. So this is the vector, this is a vector perpendicular to the curve at the point 1, negative 1. Okay, so to summarize what we did was we understood the gradient vector. That's a very important vector. We'll talk about that quite a bit in this class. To find directional derivatives, you find the dot product of the gradient and the unit vector. To find the maximum directional derivative, you find the gradient, you find the magnitude of the gradient, and the direction is the direction of the gradient. Minimum directional derivative would be negative gradient, and the exact value is negative magnitude of the gradient. Gradient is normal vector is a normal vector to the level surfaces and level curves. I will see you in the next video.